Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies, and also the Leprechaun ones. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Leprechaun Back to the Hood, released direct to video in 2003. Back to the Hood doesn't have anything to do with the previous films, not even the one it's purportedly going back to, but one thing it does share with that movie is having a real talented cast. The quartet of lead actors are Tangie Miller, Laz Alonzo, Paige Kennedy, and Sherry Jackson, and all of them put in serious performances that are leagues better than what we got in those first four movies. Shit, Laz Alonzo's so good, he wound up in a Fast and Furious and friggin' Avatar. Writer-director Steven Iram Louie changed up the Leprechaun character for this movie, getting rid of his limericks and most of his magic, and instead turned him into an ancient evil folk creature, complete with a new outfit that I personally really dig. Hopefully Warwick Davis liked it too, since this would be his last time playing the little shit. How many kills did Davis's Lep get on his farewell tour of the hood? Let's find out and get to them. The movie begins with a Disney-style book telling us backstory through some pretty cool animation. We learn that leprechauns are forest spirits who guarded their gold from falling into the hands of wicked men. Side note, I've seen some kill counts online include knights and kings who die in this animation, but I'm not going to put them on my list because it's more of a folk tale told within the movie. Anyway, when the leprechauns considered their job done, they went back to living in the woods, all except for one little shit who refused to go back home. Are you too good for your home, leprechaun? Answer me! Cut to this dude, Father Jacob, who's looking real crazed and fearful, and sweaty. He's so off his rocker that he attacks a friggin' rainbow with a shovel. Careful there, man. You might accidentally hit that little lad who loves berries and cream. Eventually, we see what he's so afraid of. It's Leprechaun and his cool new cloak. Looking kind of babadooky there, Leppy boy. Jacob gets all crazy-eyed and starts splashing the Leperdook with some holy clover water. Damn Clovis. Lep gets so pissed, they get into a little slashy stabby fight. Jacob comes out on top and banishes Lep back into the earth from whence he came. So Lep gets dragged down into the ground by a bunch of hands. Man, I wish a Freddy glove would pop up and grab his little Leprechaun hat. His mission accomplished, Jacob apologizes to this youth center sign and dies. Shame about that weird shiny CG blood coming out of him, but whatever, I guess. Go with God, Jacob. It's one year later now, and it doesn't look like that youth center ever came soon. The project died with Father Jacob, as we learn from our soon-to-be heroes, Emily, and her friends Lisa and Jamie. Lisa's great, because she's real good at spelling out the movie's themes without any subtlety. How come every time something good's about to happen, somebody always gotta go and fuck it up? Jamie, meanwhile, is in some serious shit with this dude Watson, because he owes him money for drugs, Natch. So Watson shakes him down, takes his shoes, and gives him till the end of the week to pay him. Sounds like Jamie's life needs to take a serious U-turn. Watson's also got a problem with Emily's ex-boyfriend Rory, who's new to the drug dealing game and has been selling in Watson's territory. Must be working for him though, because he's obviously making enough to live out his anime-inspired dreams with his little cap and jacket and motorcycle. It's so cute. Watson's Lieutenant Cedric, played by rapper Sticky Fingers, talks mad shit, but you know how much Rory gives a fuck? The amount it takes to do a drive-by batting, boom, it's a home run! And Watson goes wild! Emily and Lisa have a little car malfunction, which triggers another overt thematic statement from Lisa. What's it gonna get better for us, Sam? Why our lives gotta be like this? Emily promises that things will get better, an optimism that keeps her working at a beauty salon while she tries to save up for college. Some peanut gallery ladies make fun of her for wanting to go to Kansas State, but Emily's bigger annoyance is Chanel, the chick dating her ex Rory and who's played by the absolutely lovely Keisha Sharp. Can I get some service up in here? Okay, so her character's not exactly lovely here, but from my experience watching Lethal Weapon footage at my old job, she is a gem of a person. Emily and Lisa go to a psychic, Esmeralda, who looks into her scale model son and starts talking to Emily about how she lost her man and shit. Way to pick at that scab, lady. But then she excites Emily by saying she'll come into riches soon. But not so fast there, Em, cause some freaky deaky light flickering happens and Esmeralda flips out, saying the treasure must be denied when offered cause it'll actually be a little shitty. Cue a fucking page peel transition to a scene where Jamie's getting so movie high he thinks his dog is asking him for a hit. No, no, you can't have none. He finds a four leaf clover in the weed he bought from Rory, so he goes to complain and tell Rory that he needs better customer service. Do I look like a Kmart? He also tries real hard to convince Vince Rory that the new slang everyone's using is the word ninja. Filled with clovers, ninja. Ninja. I don't think it's gonna stick. I don't know who's the more annoying customer for Rory, Jamie or this movie's clueless white dude character who buys Rory's weed for his ambiguous clients. My clients love this shit. I swear I sell more because of this. Chronic! Jamie brings Rory to a little picnic they're all having at the youth center construction site when, holy shit, it's a goddamn rainbow! Mmm, and it feels so good. Get that color all up in my bod. Yeah, I have no idea what that was all about, but when Rory tries to talk to Emily, who's super mad at him for the whole drug dealing thing, she walks away and falls into a friggin' pit. They didn't get far on that youth center project, but I guess they at least broke ground. Rory runs off to get help, but Emily just decides to explore this subterranean magical land filled with candles and cobwebs and a fun-sized treasure chest. Rory comes down just in time to join Emily as she opens Marcellus Wallace's briefcase. They count up the souls, or gold, and figure out that there's a whole lot 
lot of money here, and Emily's happy to share it equally among the four of them. It's more than enough. We can all benefit from this. Yep, as long as they spend it responsibly. What do you think the odds of that happening are? Not high, because the next thing we get is a montage. And I ain't never seen no fiscally responsible montage. Nah, these ladies buy a car that's probably too expensive and take their riches to Rodeo Drive, a famously expensive shopping district in the famously expensive Beverly Hills. It's where they rode horses in The Bachelorette last season, a reference my viewing demographic is sure to appreciate. As far as the dudes go, Jamie responsibly pays back Watson to get out of debt and irresponsibly buys two garbage bags full of weed from him too. And Rory bought Chanel a whole bunch of stuff, as well as a Glock for himself, although she's free to grab his gun whenever she pleases. With his gold leppy powers activated, the lep man awakens, punching through his shallow dirt bed to grope the open air above it. He must really want to get far from the ground after that burial, because he's perched in a tree like a gargoyle watching Emily and Lisa drive around a corner. That means he probably found out about this party they're having where they're playing some off-brand Nelly. Jamie takes a friend up to his room so they can light it up and take a puff, but after Jamie leaves with the lady, the Lep shows up and is like, pass it to me now. The guy does, and Lep has such a good time, he winds up rolling around on the floor like a little giggle puss. But he sobers up real fast when he sees one of his gold shillings that the dude tries to pocket for himself. Lep immediately turns violent, stabbing the dude in the gut with a bong and killing him. Even though if the bong was sharp enough to impale his torso, how are you about to put your mouth on that thing? Lep wanders downstairs because that dude got the munchies, or he's pregnant. Either way, he's going for those pickles. It's a real goofball scene since Jamie never notices him, even slamming the fridge door in his face. I get that it's supposed to be funny, but it's also kind of dumb, especially when it ends with Jamie accidentally locking Lep inside the fridge and Lep just hotboxes it. Emily and Lisa find the Lep's broken bong victim, and the cops come to clear the place out. This one cop, Officer Whitaker, questions Rory like he's in the wire or some shit. You've been making a lot of moves on the street in the past couple of days, Rory. <laughs> you can tone down that intensity, dude. We're in a leprechaun movie. Jamie gets arrested for possession of grass clippings, and the cops take him away. Meanwhile, Chanel has stolen a coin from Rory and gets it melted down and made it to a gold tooth, which she is just all sorts of excited about. Lep tracks Emily to her work, where she's supposed to be giving that one lady, Doria, a massage. But while Em's getting more oil, Lep sneaks in and just has to Lep it up. He gives Doria a weak-ass massage, but for some reason she's into it, even when he starts walking on her back with his nasty, hairy, dirty Leppy feet. But then his killing gene takes over, and he just reaches down and breaks this lady's neck. This is Lep being a grade A little shit. Doria didn't take any of his gold or anything, mean old Lep. Lep attacks Emily and tries to stab her with a pair of scissors, but she fights back by grabbing a hair trimmer and stabbing him in the eye with it. It's a solid bit of gore, complete with green blood, and it only gets more painful to watch when the cord yanks Lep down to the floor. He ends the fun bit by ripping it out and temporarily losing an eye. Emily runs to Rory and says they have to return everything they've bought with the gold, and she tells the same to Jamie when he conveniently drives up to them to deliver a curbside So You Think You Can Dance audition. She's not able to get to Lisa, though, who's home by herself until the leprechaun comes and trips her to the ground. They engage in a cat and mouse chase, with Lep Jack torrencing his way through the bathroom door and Lisa using a hairspray flamethrower on his face. But you know Lep's gonna win this in the end, after he appears in the bathroom and leaps on her, then uses his little Lep hand to punch a hole into Lisa's stomach. She dies slowly, surely wondering what she did to deserve to have this nasty fuck as the last thing she ever saw. The others get to Lisa's house and find her body, then retreat back to Emily's house where she says they have to give back all the gold they took. But there's barely anything left since Rory spent most of his. Easy come, easy go. When she throws the chest at him, they realize that it's magically refilled itself with souls, or gold, and that it's a trick that it can repeat at will, apparently. Emily is still adamant they return it, but while she's in the other room, Rory apparently takes it and bails. Lep comes after Emily that night, merely wanting revenge for the barbershop ass beating she delivered, but he sucks so bad that she fends him off with a book. But wait, he's not done yet. Oh, from the top turnbuckle, it's a flying leprechaun! That aerial maneuver almost gives him the win, but oh my god, is that Rory's music? It is! And he's there with a drive-by batting. Oh, it's a signature move! Then Rory uh, runs the Lep over, which is just kind of manslaughter, and he gets Emily to saddle up with him and ride. Lep angrily walks after them as the scene fades to mourning. Yeah. I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah. That's what I thought she said. That morning, Leprechaun visits Chanel, who doesn't waste any time whipping out the shotgun and shooting Lep with it. Leprechaun. <laughs> but he's fine, of course, and pulls her to the ground where he sees something he likes. Yep, it's her gold tooth. And lest you think ripping out a tooth isn't fatal, we see that Lep apparently went overboard when he tosses her jaw to the ground. Rory and Emily speed on their bike past those cops from earlier, so they corner them under an overpass, and we get another wacky Star Wars transition that the editors found in iMovie. They're actually everywhere in this movie. I just don't have the time to show you all of them. The cops get physical and confiscate the treasure box, and since it's illegal to be in possession of that many souls, or gold, damn it, Rory and Emily get cuffed and put in the backseat of the cruiser. But don't look now, it's notorious civil rights lawyer Lepre Khan, and he knows those kids just got busted on a trumped up charge. Lep files his complaint with the PD by shiving Officer Thompson in the gut with his own flashlight and tossing him aside. Consider your ass guilty of being dead. Officer Whitaker tries to shoot at the incoming Lep, and then has a pretty sweet MMA fight with the little shit until Lep grabs his leg and, wait for it, yeah, look down there, dude. Rips 
rips it right the fuck off. That wacky lep is holding it in his hands, but Whitaker doesn't die right away because, after all, it's just a flesh wound. He hops that lep a few times in an effort to reclaim his limb before he finally falls to the ground. Alright, he'll call the draw. Lep goes after Em and Rory next, but Emily manages to grab the police shotgun and participate in that old reliable pastime of shooting leprechauns. Good time to mention that now I know shotgun shells don't go into the leprechaun, that's the part that falls to the ground empty. Thank you for correcting me in the comments for my lep one kill count. Now I know better. Rory and Emily scoop up Jamie so they can get rid of the gold, but then they get cornered by Watson and his crew, and he steals the gold from Rory for himself before going to exact some non-monetary revenge. And that's when a police car drives up. In a solid gag, a cop's foot steps out of the vehicle, only for us to see that it's the detached limb of Officer Whitaker, and that it was actually Leprechaun driving that police car. Lep tells Watson that the gold he just took is rightfully his, and demands it back from him, but in another decently funny gag, Watson puts him on hold as he takes a call from a lady who's all like, Watson, come here, I want to see you. After Watson gets her to take a rain check, he proceeds to uppercut Lep into a trash can. But Lep dusts himself off and encourages Watson to beat the shit out of him. Guess you never saw any of the other Leprechaun movies, Watson, cause Lep can take a beating, dude. Leprechaun basically pulls a Manhattan rooftop Jason here, tiring Watson out before delivering a fatal blow, which in this case means stabbing into Watson's gut and ripping out his still beating prop heart. Watson's gang takes an immediate disliking to Leprechaun and opens fire on him with a whole arsenal of guns. They just tear into the little shit and get him looking like that part one puppet that fell into the well. But then the puppet turns back into Warwick Davis, who tries out that hip new youth slang. What's up, ninjas? Nope, sounds weird. Then he fights them all, but I don't think these first two dudes get killed, cause I'm just hearing standard punching sound effects. Lep does kill Cedric though, after he jumps on him and tears into his throat. Rory manages to get Lep off, but it's too late. Cedric bleeds out to death as he looks into Rory's eyes, all like, hey man, can you believe a leprechaun just did this shit to me? Lep turns his attention to Rory next, only to get hit by a car scary movie style by Emily and Jamie. They think they're in the clear, but Lep is sideshow bobbing underneath that car, with some real jank looking special effects that only get worse when he looks through a hole in the car floor that he tore out. They're eventually able to shake him off the vehicle and drive away, heading straight to Esmeralda's to get some help. Esmeralda tells them all the backstory of the leprechauns that we learned in the opening animation sequence, and then says that he has two weaknesses. His gold and the four-leaf clover. Good thing Jamie's got some of Rory's weed on him, and that it just so happens to have clovers in it. Rory gets to work chopping up the clovers and putting them inside the hollow tip bullets for his Glock, then we clock wipe away to Rory and Jamie getting ready for the big leprechaun showdown. Leppy Boy busts down the door, and Rory just shoots him friggin' immediately. Damn clover! He puts a few more rounds in him, which causes Lep to bleed out yellow floating bubbles. But when his gun gets jammed, Lep just sucks all those little orbs back into his chest and knocks down both Rory and Emily. Jamie enters the match with the home run bat, but Lep breaks it over his knee and stabs Jamie in the leg with it. But guns and baseball bats are boring. Let's have a motherfucking magic fight between Esmeralda and Leprechaun. Hell yeah! She starts hitting him up with some powerful blue magic orbs and shit, and she seems to have the upper hand until Lep's eyes glow red and he growls like a demon? We stray further from God with every one of these movies. Esmeralda screams to death in an exterior shot, meaning we'll never know what dark magic he used to kill her with, but those storm eyes tell me she's pretty dead. Rory and Emily escape and wind up on top of the roof, but Lep is able to just transport to where they are and get into another beat em up knock em down fight. Emily puts it on pause when she grabs the treasure chest and starts throwing his gold shillings off of the roof and into some drying cement. Babies! Emily's able to get away from the Lep, and she winds up in a couple of nightmarish locations when he finally catches up to her. In a last ditch effort to defeat him, Emily opens up the furnace and tosses his chest of gold into it. Then she tosses him inside the flames as well and locks him up like he's an evil leppy entity. He burns up all nasty like, melting into a gross green sweaty skull. But when Emily goes to get Rory from the rooftop, she's followed by a rainbow cause this little Skittles motherfucker doesn't know when to stop. He ends up knocking Rory down and throwing Emily off the roof so she's hanging onto the edge for dear life. Watch it Em, this dude loves playing this little piggy. But looks like the only one going wee 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 today is Leprechaun cause Rory gets his Glock working and shoots Leprechaun with the remaining clover bullets, spurring some more weird yellow bubbles out of his body. As Rory heroically rescues Emily from the edge, Lep manages to just suck those orbs back inside of himself again and take like a thousand and one more bullets. Seriously, what is up with those orbs? They don't seem to do anything. Cause what really spells the end of Lep is Emily hitting him with the treasure chest and knocking him off the roof to fall down, down, down with all of his shillings into a perfectly Lep-sized little pool of wet cement. Lep takes a really long time terminating his way down below the surface, but eventually he's fully submerged, which I'll go ahead and count on the list. A rooftop hug signals the end of our story. Oh wait, let's denouement with some Macy Gray sounding music over a happy motorcycle montage. Nice. We also get confirmation that Jamie lived. Oh, and look, the youth center finally opened. Good times. The end. Close that motherfucking book. Lep went back to the hood, but did he pick up more kills on his second visit? Let's find out and get to the numbers.
There were 11 victims in Leprechaun Back to the Hood, meaning that the kills managed to steadily increase for every Warwick Davis Leprechaun movie. Good work, Lep. The victims included 7 men and 4 women, the most balanced gender breakdown for a Leprechaun movie yet. With a runtime of 90 minutes, that comes out to a kill on average every 8.18 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Officer Whitaker. Tearing a leg off is one of the more graphic kills Lep has done, but what really seals the deal is Whitaker's reluctance to give up and die, as well as the post-mortem use his leg gets for that funny police car gag. Dol Machete for lamest kill will go to Doria, not only because it's a return to those lame neck snaps from the first couple of movies, but also because she didn't do anything, Lep. And that's it. Leprechaun Back to the Hood came out on video in 2003 and would be Warwick Davis's last dance with Leppy Boy. I'll admit that while covering these movies, I've developed a slight fondness for the little shit, so it's a real shame to have to trade him in for the thing we get in Leprechaun Origins. We'll look at that reboot on Friday, but until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching today's Kill Count. I want to thank a couple of patrons like Lee Chapman and Eddie Viegas. I got some bad news for you. There's only one Leprechaun movie left. God, don't you wish there were like a dozen of these things? Don't expect Leprechaun Origins to be anything like the movies that we just covered, because it is not. And for everyone wanting to know the next franchise, you'll find out soon. I'll see you on Friday for that. And unlike that little shit Leprechaun, be good people.